G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for another episode of Wasteland Survival. So, in last week's episode, obviously, we built the mining rig here. Um, so, what I basically want to do is obviously get this thing running. So, um, there are also a couple of modifications that I kind of want to make to the Atlas. So, if we head on inside, I'll just show you guys what I wanted to do. I did kind of mention this in the last episode. Well, basically, while I was editing, I kind of found a few mistakes that I had made. And I thought, you know, in this episode, we could go ahead and we could fix them. So, first of all... Um, I want to add another O2 H2 generator here and then probably what I can do is I might be able to add another one um, here as well and maybe even there as well so maybe that's something I can do too um, in fact yeah I could probably place one here um, so there's a couple of things I kind of want to um, change up in this room and um, Okay then. Yeah, I basically want to get this thing all sorted out and um, also what I could do is I could remove this plate here and then behind that sits a conveyor junction and I plan to move this one back and then maybe place another one there. Maybe even place like another three here so, you know, we should have plenty of O2 H2 generators to at least like double the amount of um, hydrogen that we can create. But, before I go ahead and I do all that, basically what I think I will do is I will probably create a time lapse of this drill in action. Because it is really difficult to see what it actually does when it is moving so slowly. And obviously we don't want to sit here and wait for this thing to do its thing over a period of about half an hour. So, without further ado, I will start with the time lapse now.
Alright guys, well, I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. So all up, it took about 30 to 35 minutes to um, get down to this level and it probably took me about an hour and a half to create the whole thing. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So now, what we got to do is actually slow... Well, actually stop all of these pistons and drills. So we go one, three, and then five. And then also what I've done is I've set up the braking torque on the piston as well. So yeah, that should be, yeah. So that should stop. Awesome. So you can see we've actually drilled down quite a ways. And I'm actually curious to see um, just how far down these pistons actually went. So let's go ahead and actually have a look at that. So, because I'm not exactly sure how far down they went. So current position, um, yeah, okay. So this one here was the one that I lowered um, at the first stage of it to try and make the area flat. So it looks like the pistons have gone down about 2.2 meters, which is not too bad. All right, cool. So, I'm pretty sure that should mean that we are completely full of ice. So, let me just go into here and then just confirm that. So, yeah, that's full of ice. Um, let me just search everything that contains ice. So, you can see the drills are pretty much absolutely chock-a-block full of ice as well. So, yeah, seems like about 35 minutes is probably the sweet spot for this. And it seems like absolutely every little single, uh, single, I should say, cargo container is chock-a-block full of ice, which is very, very nice. So, now what I want to do is go ahead and basically just figure out where I want to place these additional O2H2 generators. Now, what I actually discovered was a lot of the materials that I had salvaged from the Reaver wreck actually weren't in the inventory of the ship itself they were still in the weld ship so it turns out that i had a lot more resources than what i thought i did so i should be able to build a lot more of these o2h2 generators than what i thought i could so let's go ahead and i want to place an additional one down here um i'm pretty sure that's the way i wanted to place it is that the way that i wanted it to go yeah, I, I think that should be alright. Alright, so we'll place it like that. Maybe what I could do instead, though, is flip it around, and then we could have one sitting there as well. But I think what I may do is I may just place one here like this. So if we go and we spin this around, and then we can place one there upside down like that. Although it doesn't look too glamorous, but I guess... It will kind of serve the function. And also, what I would love to do is place one here as well. So, I'm just going to grind these out. And I think what I'm going to do is place one here. So, we will grab our... So, we'll probably place it like that, I reckon. So, that should work pretty well. So, we'll place that there. And then what I can do is I can place another one next to that as well. So, and then we'll do the same on the other side too. So, I believe I already have one there. Yes, I do. So, let's go ahead and get rid of these conveyor pipes. And let's go ahead and we'll place another one here like that. Yeah, we have to place it like that, don't we? Yep, like that. Fantastic. Alright, and now what I want to do is I want to move this one forward well basically what I need to do actually is flip it over or kind of flip it around so it's like so if we grab one so it'll be like like that um, which is the op opposite orientation to what it is now because what I'm gonna have to do is I want these cargo ports to line up so that I still can transfer materials in between these hydrogen tanks even though they're sort of connected here and I could move these ones forward but what I would have to do is relocate these sensors to underneath here which you know what I think I might actually do that and then what will happen is the the top and the bottom will kind of look the same so but I'm probably gonna do a lot of that off-camera 
or perhaps I can create a time lapse for that as well because it's going to take me quite a while to do it and I don't think you guys really want to watch me do that so all right guys I'll see you in a second once this is all done Alright guys, welcome back. So, as you can see, I have completed all of the upgrades to the Atlas. So, currently we have an additional 12 O2 H2 generators on each side. So, obviously that gives us 24. And if we add the additional 10 that we had existing, then, you know, obviously we have 34. So, you know, we got about three and a half times the capacity to generate hydrogen than what we had before. Um, what I did in between the time lapse and now is I went ahead and I actually named all of these properly. Um, I named all of these properly as well. And um, yeah, so it's all looking pretty sweet. Um, I think it's looking pretty good. Now, I could have put more, but to be honest with you, I don't really want to put any more in. I, I could maybe put one there. Um, I could probably go ahead and place one there as well. But yeah, like I said, I don't really want to add any more than what I've done here. Because um, I think these ones look pretty good. So like the aesthetic is kind of remaining um, and it doesn't look too bad. Um, and then also I decided to put in this little block here. I probably could have put another one there as well, but... I didn't really want to have three of these, I just thought that looked a little bit weird, so I ended up deciding to put this here instead. So, but, the problem is, even with all that extra hydrogen capacity, um, you can see that these hydrogen tanks are just filling extremely slowly. And, the process of me renaming all of this stuff probably took me about, you know, 40 minutes plus the 20 or so minutes it took me to actually create all these modifications. And in 40 minutes we've only managed to get to like, you know, 51.4%. So a couple of people a long time ago in one of my previous episodes asked me why I had so many O2H2 generators on the base. Well, this is the reason why. Um, even though Keen Software kind of doubled the rate at which these generate hydrogen from ice, I can't really remember if they um, changed the value or the amount of hydrogen that was generated per unit of ice, but I do know that they doubled the speed of the O2H2 generators, and even then, you know, with 34 of these things, um, 36 tanks I think it's 36 tanks. No, I think it was um, 26 tanks in this ship. Just take an enormous amount of time to fill. So I'm not going to hang around and, you know, we're not going to wait for that to happen. I'll probably just skip to the point where everything is full. Um, and actually, I'm kind of curious as to how much ice I have left. Oh, yeah. Also, what I decided to do was kind of hide this um, O2H2 generator behind these blocks here so you can see that you know the O2H2 generator is there and yeah I basically just decided to hide it behind this block here because I just thought it looked nice so yeah let me know what you guys think do you like the upgrades do you think they look all right uh, do you think they don't look all right and um, would you do anything differently so yeah let me know in the comments down below also what I tried to do as much as possible was try and hide these conveyor ports so I think this was kind of an elegant solution but obviously I can't do that here because um, this conveyor port is there and one other thing I thought about doing was kind of adding some of these blocks so where are they these light armor panels here just so that I could try and hide um, those ports there but unfortunately the only place I could really put the light was kind of there because as it turns out you can't actually place a light here on an O2H2 generator which I found to be strange you can place it there no problems but you cannot place it there so yeah I, I thought that was a bit strange and I wonder if I can actually place the double lights no I can't so yeah that's a little bit strange. I don't know why you can't do that. But anyway, so, all right, well, what I'll do is I'll go away and um, I will refill all of these hydrogen tanks. And once that is all done, then I'll be back. But just before we do that, I just want to see exactly how much ice we have left. So, we'll kind of, actually, we'll go to the large cargo containers because that'll 
give us a little bit more of a better indication. So I've got 70,000 in that one, 23,000 in that one. We've got 1.1, 1.1, and yeah, so I've probably gone through, I'd say about maybe half. So one, two, yeah, so there's about three of the cargo containers that are empty. But, um, yeah, so I think we've probably processed about half of the ice that we've managed to mine. And that's been in about 40 minutes. So I expect this whole process will take about an hour and a half to get all this stuff refined. And whether or not that will actually totally fill the ship up is another question. And then from there, what I basically have to do is work out, um, once these tanks are full, I want to take some ice back with me to the planet, but I kind of got to work out how much weight this thing can carry um, in the pertam gravity as well. So that's another thing I have to do before we head back to base. And then once we do head back to base, then I can finally get started on um, finishing that. So, all right, guys, I will see you once all of this is done. All right, guys. Well, after many, many hours of digging and refueling and digging and refueling and so on and so forth, I am finally back. So it probably took me, oh gee, I, I don't know how many hours it took me to actually fill the ship, but it is 110% full now. Um, well, 100% full. Um, also, I have a fair bit of ice on board, although not too much. So I figured out that the ship can probably hold around about 6.2 million kilos um well it can weigh 6.2 million kilos and then still land back down on the planet now what i've done is i've probably left it at somewhere like 5.8 million kilos just to give myself a little bit of leeway because if i did leave it um weighing 6.2 million kilos then it would yeah it would struggle to slow down and i'm likely to crash the thing into the side of a mountain so also, what I had to do to kind of, like, because I overfilled the ship quite a bit, um, so what I ended up doing was just building this large hydrogen tank here and then this small hydrogen tank so that I could try and um, get rid of some of the ice and then put it into these hydrogen tanks here. Um, I've shut down all this stuff and, yeah, so we're ready to head back to the planet. And if I have a look at the battery here, this thing should have... Yeah, so it's got enough power for 41 days, so I'm not too worried about this thing despawning when the uh, cleanup routine comes along. So yeah, now we shall make our way back to the planet. I didn't really have too many troubles with the Reavers. Um, there was one case where I had to kind of jump away and then come back. But yeah, like just a small little blind jump, maybe 50 kilometers. I, I can't really remember exactly. And then I came back to this location and then just continued on. Um, the rest of them just kind of flew on past and didn't really bother me too much. Um, normally I would try and attack them or like try and defend myself. But I just kind of wanted to get this thing filled up without having, you know, to deal with the Reavers too much. So, yeah, as you can see, we're at 5.94 million kilos. So I think we should be pretty good to land back down on the planet. At least... I hope my calculations are correct and we are okay to land back down on the planet, otherwise, yeah, it's not going to end very well for us. So, actually, in fact, where is the planet? Alright, so, I think I'm going to have to go maybe this way a little bit, because is the landing pad on this side of the planet? I think it is. Although, I'm not sure. Okay, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go... Yeah, it looks like it's on this side of the planet, so it should be alright. So, what I'm going to do is just head on over to this Pertam entry point. So, what we'll do is we'll grab our jump drives. So, I think it's jump drive number one. And I will set a coordinate here. So, we want our Pertam entry point, if I can find it. Oh, sweet. It looks like they've um, fixed it where they're now in alphabetical order. All right, so let's select that. Um, 
although for some reason the jump drives aren't locking onto that. So which is my master jump drive? Hang on, let's have a look here. So we've got Atlas jump drives, jump drive one, jump. Alright, so we'll do that. So jump destination, per tam entry point, distance to the proximity coordinates, 83.86 kilometers. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Alright, so let's go and jump over to that point. Fantastic. Alright, I will put my brakes on and then we will head on down to the planet. Although, unfortunately, it looks like it, it is night time at the moment, which is, yeah, not really ideal, but there's not really too much I can do about that. Um, so, I think I have my bottom thrusters on a group. Do I? Hang on. Let's see if I have my bottom thrusters on a group. group. Downward thrusters, backwards, all thrusters. No. Alright, so... Oh, and it looks like the Reavers have just spawned. Alright, what I'm going to have to do here, I think, is just kind of sink down to the planet and just turn off my inertial dampeners. So, let's just do that. Now, I need to be really careful with my speed because, like I said before, the ship weighs an enormous amount at this point in time and it's going to take a very long time for it to slow down even with the sheer amount of thrusters that I have on the bottom of this thing so right. and it looks like these reavers are still gaining on me which is not good so I'm going to have to come in a little bit hotter than what I would like but there's not too much I can do about that Okay, so that looks like a straight angle there. I'll just turn on my dampeners once more to kind of straighten myself out. Alright, cool. Now I'll turn them off and we'll just let gravity do the work. What I might do actually is I'll create a group for the upwards thrusters. Um, so let's find the up thrusters. And let's make a group. Atlas upward thrust. Save that. And then we'll add that to our hotbar. Toggle block on and off. And if we turn those off, that should be the bottom thrusters all turned off. Alright, fantastic. Cool. So basically what that allows me to do is kind of come down straight so I don't really have to worry about the ship veering from side to side or back to back and forth so we should be able to come down relatively straight and just land straight on the landing pad so I'm gonna put on my thrusters and just see how long it actually takes for me to slow down Yeah, it takes a while. I totally forgot that I'd actually <laughs> disabled my inertial dampeners and for some reason the ship was still, yeah, the ship was still kind of moving backwards and I couldn't figure out why. Yeah, so that's why. <laughs> and you can just, and you can see just how long it takes for this thing to actually um, stop. So it looks like I'm not entirely straight, although I'm not too concerned about that at this point. Ooh. She is very heavy guys, very, very heavy. And you can see just how long it's taking us to actually slow down I mean look at that all right I think from this point onwards I'm just going to use my downwards thrusters to push us down I'm not going to bother turning the thrusters off to kind of sink down with the gravity just because of the fact that I've got um, so much weight in the ship at the moment and 
I don't think it's going to work out too well. And you can see it's just drifting like crazy. Um, I think that looks about right. Just level out a bit here. Got to be very careful with how much thrust I give this thing. Yeah, you can see just how long it actually takes. And this is the reason why I didn't fill it up all the way to 6.2 million kilos. Because, I mean, technically, it can handle it. And I could theoretically keep the ship aloft while I'm doing, um, you know, while the ship weighs that much. But it's just way too risky. And as you can see, like, it's... It's at its limit right now. Oh, please stop. Please stop. Oh, that was so close. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly why I didn't want to load it up to the absolute brim. Alright, so hopefully we can get this thing kind of centered up. And this is why I've made those thruster trenches on the landing pad, because you can see the, the thrusters are just... Yeah, they would burn massive holes in the landing pad, so... Are we... somewhat in the center? I think we're on the, uh, the connector. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Ready to lock. Oh, awesome! Alright, fantastic! Uh, let's find the landing gears, and let's lock those down. Alright, and actually, what I should do is probably turn the thrusters off, and then I will turn off the landing lights, and then I will turn off the landing spotlights and the front spotlights, because we don't need those anymore. Fantastic! Um, I don't know why these ore deposits are still showing. That is bizarre. Alright, no matter. Alright, so... Whoa, I forgot how much gravity is on this planet, because when I was flying around with my jetpack in space, I had no gravity to deal with, so yeah, it was kind of, um, I could kind of just go as fast as I want. And in fact, I managed to last that entire time in space flying around with only one jetpack bottle, which is just crazy. It's, um, it's amazing how much jetpack fuel you use on a planet, it's pretty crazy. Um, so, let's have a look at our O2H2 generators. Um, I'm going to turn the Atlas ones on. And they should be... So, now let's have a look at our hydrogen tanks. Um, base hydrogen tanks, they are on. So let's have a look and... Yeah, so they should be filling up now because... I managed to bring back... I think it was somewhere in the realm of about 2 million kilos worth of ice. So let me just double check that. I might turn these HUD icons off because they're distracting me and it's getting annoying. Alright, let's have a look in the large cargo containers. So yeah, that's roughly how much I managed to bring back plus what was in the O2H2 generators already. So um, hopefully that should be enough to fill up the hydrogen tanks on the base a little bit. Although I have no illusions um, that that will fill them completely because, you know, there's 16 hydrogen tanks on the base, so it will take a fair amount of ice to fill them. And in fact, what I'm tempted to do is um, set the base hydrogen tanks to stockpile, wait until all of this ice has been processed and turned into hydrogen and then put into those, um, those hydrogen tanks. And then 
yeah, basically going back up into space and then filling up the Atlas once more and then bringing back another whole load of ice so that we will never, ever have to get any hydrogen ever again. Although, uh, one thing I haven't checked though, have I actually turned on the O2 H2 generators for the base? Yeah, they're on. Alright, cool. So, let's search for the O2. So it seems like every O2 H2 generator in the base is just smashing out this hydrogen, which is very nice. Actually, I want to see how fast this is actually filling up. Yeah, so this is filling up way quicker than what it did in the Atlas when I was in space. So yeah, that's um, that's pretty nice. Anyway, guys, I will see you once um, all these tanks are full. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Alright guys, welcome back. So, I kind of had a little bit of a change of heart. Rather than waiting for all of those um, hydrogen tanks to fill and going back out into space and grabbing some more ice, I just, I'm kind of at the point now where I don't think it's really worth it. Um, I mean, I already have an absolute ton of hydrogen, so I just don't think I really need to go back to that asteroid to... Um, yeah, mine some more ice. Um, but there is one other thing that I wanted to do. So, like I said before, the plan with the base is to... Um, so, obviously, this here is the end of the hangar. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Um, down below us, we've got a garage, airlock, hallway, and then another airlock at the back. So, I want to do something similar here. So, I want to place an airlock here then another hallway and then an airlock behind that and I want those two airlocks at the end to kind of meet up with each other and I want to connect both of those with an elevator shaft but first obviously we need to build the airlock then the hallway and then after that the uh, airlock at the back of that and then from there we can start creating our um, our elevator and then after that, I want a third level to go right up until the top of the mountain. Maybe not 19.35 kilometers high. Um, but roughly where the um, that point defense is at the top of the mountain. So what I've done is I've created this projector, obviously. Uh, put a control seat on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to project this blueprint through the mountain which is my drill guide so let's find the projector in the hangar let's find our blueprint and let's find our guide I'll search for that and I think it is this one hallway airlock all right so we will select that and then if we go out we can see that it is completely yeah in the wrong way that I want it to be. So what I will do is I will adjust the pitch of this. We'll see how it looks now. So, okay. So the pitch is okay, but what have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. So I want it to be in the middle. So I need four blocks on either side of the fifth block. So I probably need to move it over by four. So let's try that. So, but first, I think what I'll do is I'll move it forward. So we'll move it like that. And then I'll move it over by f negative four blocks. And we'll see how that looks. Well, I can't really see it. All right, let's move it back one more block. So forward offset, we'll make that seven and let's just confirm that this is in the middle yep cool all right so obviously what I need to do from here is drill this out um, in fact do I need it to be one level below uh, no I think that should be right I think that is the right dimensions all right so and it doesn't really matter because um, like how far into the mountain I drill because directly behind this is going to be a hallway with very similar dim dimensions to the uh, you know to the airlock and what I mean by dimensions is I mean like you know the width and 
the height so I don't think I really need to worry about making it um, absolutely perfect so what I will do not that button so we will project this forward by about I don't know let's say that so 10 blocks so it's just showing through here and then what I'm going to do is drill out this way until we get to the furthest point so we'll go this way oh, except for this glitch that they've now added into the game which is very very annoying so we will right click drill all the way to the edge okay so that seems like it is the edge and then what I'll do is I'll go upwards and I think it's only three blocks so we should be able to go yeah okay so that's the upwards portion now if you guys remember what I want to do is I want the the walls to be completely flat so I think the best way to do that is actually drill this center block here first and then from there I can kind of get my feet uh, in the hole so you know obviously you can see my character's feet are kind of dangling below where I want to drill so whenever I try and drill a fresh um, a fresh hole my my legs kind of get caught and then I end up going up and up and up every time I go through the hole so what I'll do first though is I'll drill this one out and then from there that'll allow me to drill out all the way from here up here and then over to that side as well and obviously I've got to you know kind of drill this side out as well but what I'll do is I will go and I will drill all of this out and then I will see you once this is done okay well as you can see I've fully drilled this out the walls are looking nice and flat and obviously if you guys remember from the other episodes this is basically where I'm going to have a window and then through that window you're going to be able to see these walls so I wanted these walls to kind of be as flat as possible and I certainly think that I have achieved that in this case so what I'll quickly do though is just put a block here so that we can get our wall started um, in fact I need to get myself some more steel blocks now if my memory serves me correctly well actually I went ahead and I checked it anyway so I don't really need to rely on my memory but basically what I need to do from here is I need to select this color um, and then we need to go ahead and we need to place seven blocks um, in between here and the next door so that's obviously one two three four five six and then seven and then this will be obviously our eighth block and that is going to be where the next door will sit and then from here we will just make this go all the way back to this point here and then we should be good and then all we need to do from here is not activate the drill while we are in midair so that it doesn't do that funky stuff um, what I need to do from here is just drill this out but I think this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill to one side because what I find is that um, with the interior blocks it always seems to show um, the interior block on one side so I'm going to try and get around that uh, well maybe I won't be able to but we'll see how we go with this so yeah like basically what happened what tends to happen quite a lot is let's say I weld this block up well okay let's uh, <laughs> let's withdraw the resources for that block and then try and weld it up okay so if I try and weld these blocks up yeah you can see the voxels are kind of poking through them now I was kind of planning to get around that by um, drilling either side but it seems like the game's not going to let me do that so what I'll have to do instead is kind of drill this little line out um, and then we'll just yeah I might just have to drill a three block wide space to get around this issue and hey it looks like the um, 
the drill didn't end up in mid-air like it did last time, which is great. Uh, let's see if I can... Whoa! Man, <laughs> it always makes... Okay, then. It always makes me jump when that happens, for some reason. Alright, now we should be able to place our blocks down. And then we should see nothing but the interior wall itself. Uh, how many blocks is that? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this needs to be our eighth block. And cool. So I don't think the voxels are going to show through on these ones, so I think we should be all right. But then oh, this drill, it's driving me mad. Like I said to you guys, I think it has something to do with the the recoil that they added into the game. Did I damage these? Yeah, I think I did. I think it has something to do with the recoil that they added into the game. Um, and once again, this is the most, the most annoying issue. Energy low. Because I should be able to change my drill while I'm in the middle of flying around with my jetpack without any problems like I don't see why that should be an issue but nowadays it seems like an it is an issue and I hope that they fix that relatively quickly because like I said it is really really annoying okay I think that should be enough so then we'll grab our interior walls again we'll place these all along here place one at the end wait no we won't place anything there because that's where a conveyor junction will need to go so for that we need this block and we'll place a conveyor junction like that then we will grab our interior walls and then line them all along this way and then what we need to do is flip them over like that and then place them in this trench here and I think what I'll do as well is I'll place one here just so that it's got something to anchor to. So I'll place one there like that. Even though it's not technically necessary and it will still be airtight, I just like to place one there so that it does have something to hang on to, if that makes sense. Alright, and now all we need to do is go ahead and weld these up. But before I do that... I think it might be important to start laying out the floor on the other side. So for this, we just need our regular um, armor blocks. So I'm pretty sure it only goes to... Actually, I think it might be three blocks wide. I'll have to check it. Um, hmm. I think it is, actually. Because it kind of goes... Yeah, it is. It's three blocks wide. So, lay out these blocks and then we have our floor complete. Okay, so the floor is entirely laid out. So now what I need to do, obviously, is start laying out the wall. So, um, it actually goes directly from the door and then kind of spans outwards. So, I kind of need to follow that same kind of uh, pattern, I would say. Um, and then from here, I believe we have this block, which goes like that. Um, except it is the dark grey colour. And then from there, we have this block here. And that kind of goes along there like that. And, okay, so... Well, actually, I think this block here may be a little bit different. I think it's a bit like I think it was this block here but I could have sworn this kind of stuck out a little bit so yeah I'm gonna have to refer back to that and then um, yeah try and figure out exactly how this went because my memory is failing me and I can't exactly remember how this all went but I do know that the window if I can find it on my hotbar, went something like this. So the windows went something like that. And they were about three blocks wide. 
So then we will flip this around and they went something like that except they were this color here. And then from there I think it went to a different shape. So anyway guys that's pretty much all I've no got time energy. for in this episode of Wasteland Survival. So obviously in the next episode we'll finish up this airlock. Um, we'll get this hallway built and then I kind of need to figure out, because I think that this hallway will be a little bit of a different dimension or length to the hallway that is down below. Um, and the hallway that I'm talking about down below is the one where we have the refinery room, the, um, the power room, the O2H2 generators, and then the cargo room. So this one, maybe what I'll do is I'll create some sort of a... I don't know, like maybe a mess hall and then also maybe a barracks as well. Because um, I think, yeah, I mean, you've definitely got to have, we well, don't have to, but it would be nice to have somewhere where you can kind of have a, um, I don't know, a space for people to actually live. Because, um, I mean, generally that's the kind of thing you would find in a base, I would say. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Wasteland Survival, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Wasteland Survival. Alright, guys, um, if you like this episode, then definitely consider leaving a like, and uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you do not miss the next episode. Alright, guys, I will see you next time.